All right, friends, time for chapter 16, Through the Trap Door. In years to come, Harry would never quite remember how he had managed to get through his exams when he half expected Voldemort to come bursting through the door at any moment. Yet the days crept by and there could be no doubt that Fluffy was still alive and well behind the locked door. It was sweltering hot, especially in the large classroom where they did their written papers. They had been given special new quills for the exams, which had been bewitched with an anti-cheating spell. They had practical exams as well. Professor Flitwick called them in one by one to his class to see if they could make a pineapple tap dance across a desk. Professor McGonagall watched them turn a mouse into a snuff box. Points were given for how pretty the snuff box was, but taken away if it had whiskers. Snape made them all nervous, breathing down their necks while they tried to remember how to make a forgetfulness potion. Harry did the best he could, trying to ignore the stabbing pains in his forehead, which had been bothering him ever since his trip into the forest. Neville thought Harry had a bad case of exam nerves because Harry couldn't sleep, but the truth was that Harry kept being woken by his old nightmare, except that it was now worse than ever because there was a hooded figure dripping blood in it. Maybe it was because they hadn't seen what Harry had seen in the forest, or because they didn't have scars burning on their foreheads. But Ron and Hermione didn't seem as worried about the stone as Harry. The idea of Voldemort certainly scared them, but he didn't keep visiting them in dreams, and they were so busy with their studying, they didn't have much time to fret about what Snape or anyone else might be up to. Their very last exam was History of Magic. One hour of answering questions about batty old wizards who'd invented self-stirring cauldrons and they'd be free, free for a whole wonderful week until their exam results came out. When the ghost of Professor Binns told them to put down their quills and roll up their parchment, Harry couldn't help cheering with the rest. That was far easier than I thought it would be, said Hermione, as they joined the crowds flocking out onto the sunny grounds. I need to have learned about the 1637 Werewolf Code of Conduct or the uprising of Alfred the Eager. Hermione always liked to go through their exam papers afterward, but Ron said this made him feel ill, so they wandered down to the lake and flopped under a tree. The Weasley twins and Lee Jordan were tickling the tentacles of a giant squid, which was basking in the warm shallows. No more studying, Ron sighed cheerfully, stretching out on the grass. You could be more cheerful, Harry. We've got a week before we find out how badly we've done. There's no need to worry yet. Harry was rubbing his forehead. I wish I knew what this means, he burst out angrily. My scar keeps hurting. It's happened before, but never as often as this. Go to Madame Pomfrey, Hermione suggested. I'm not ill, said Harry. I think it's a warning. It means danger's coming. Ron couldn't get worked up. It was too hot. Harry, relax. Hermione's right. The stone's safe as long as Dumbledore's around. Anyway, we've never had any proof Snape found out how to get past Fluffy. He nearly had his leg ripped off once. He's not going to try it again in a hurry. And Neville will play Quidditch for England before Hagrid lets Dumbledore down. Harry nodded, but he couldn't shake off a lurking feeling that there was something he'd forgotten to do, something important. When he tried to explain this, Hermione said, that's just the exams. I woke up last night and was halfway through my transfiguration notes before I remembered we'd done that one. Harry was quite sure the unsettled feeling didn't have anything to do with work, though. He watched an owl flutter toward the school across the bright blue sky, a note clamped in its mouth. Hagrid was the only one who ever sent him letters. Hagrid would never betray Dumbledore. Hagrid would never tell anyone how to get past Fluffy. Never, but... Harry suddenly jumped to his feet. Where are you going, said Ron sleepily. I've just thought of something, said Harry. He had turned white. We've got to go and see Hadrick now. Why, Hermione panted, trying to keep up. Don't you think it's a bit odd, said Harry, scrambling up the grassy slope, that what Hagrid wants more than anything else is a dragon and a stranger turns up who just happens to have an egg in his pocket? How many people wander around with dragon eggs if it's against wizard law? Lucky they found Hagrid, don't you think? Why didn't I see it before? What are you talking about, said Ron, but Harry, sprinting across the grounds toward the forest, didn't answer. Hagrid was sitting in an armchair outside his house, his trousers and sleeves rolled up as he was shelling peas into a large bowl. 
Hello, he said, smiling. Finished your exams? Got time for a drink? Yes, please, said Ron, but Harry cut him off. No, we're in a hurry, Hagrid. I've got to ask you something. You know that night you won Norbert, what did the stranger you were playing cards with look like? Dunno, said Hagrid casually. He wouldn't take his cloak off. He saw the three of them look stunned and raised his eyebrows. It's not that unusual. You got a lot of funny folk in the hog's head. That's the pub down in the village. Might have been a dragon dealer, mightn't he? I never saw his face. He kept his hood up. Harry sank down next to the bowl of peas. What did you talk to him about, Hagrid? Did you mention Hogwarts at all? Might have come up, said Hagrid, frowning as he tried to remember. Yeah, he asked what I did, and I told him I was gamekeeper here. He asked a bit about the sort of creatures I look after. So I told him, and I said what I always really wanted was a dragon. And then, I can't remember too well, because he kept buying me drinks. Let's see. Yeah, then he said he had the dragon egg, and we could play cards for it if I wanted. But he had to be sure I could handle it. He didn't want to just give any give it to any old home. So I told him about Fluffy after Fluffy, well, a dragon would be easy. And did he, did he seem interested in Fluffy, Harry asked, trying to keep his voice calm. Well, yeah, I mean, how many three-headed dogs do you meet, even around Hogwarts? So I told him, Fluffy's a piece of cake if you know how to calm him down. Just play him a bit of music and he'll go straight off to sleep. Hagrid suddenly looked horrified. I shouldn't have told you that, he blurted out. Forget I said it. Hey, where are you going? Harry, Ron, and Hermione didn't speak to each other at all until they came to a halt in the entrance hall, which seemed very cold and gloomy after the grounds. We've got to go to Dumbledore, said Harry. Hagrid told that stranger how to get past Fluffy, and he was either Snape or Voldemort under that cloak. It must have been easy once he got Hagrid drunk. I just hope Dumbledore believes us. Ferenz might back us up if Bane doesn't stop him. Where's Dumbledore's office? They looked around as if hoping to see a sign pointing them in the right direction. They had never been told where Dumbledore lived, nor did they know anyone who had been sent to see him. We'll just have to, Harry began, but his voice suddenly rang across the hall. What are you three doing inside? It was Professor McGonagall carrying a large pile of books. We want to see Professor Dumbledore, said Hermione. Rather bravely, Harry and Ron thought. See, Professor Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall repeated as though this was a very fishy thing to want to do. Why? Harry swallowed. Now what? Now what? It's sort of a secret, he said, but he wished he hadn't at once because Professor McGonagall's nostrils flared. Professor Dumbledore left 10 minutes ago, she said coldly. He received an urgent owl from the Ministry of Magic and flew off to London at once. He's gone, said Harry frantically. Now? Professor Dumbledore is a very great wizard, Potter. He has many demands on his time, but this is important. Something you have to say is more important than the Ministry of Magic, Potter? Look, said Harry, throwing caution to the wind. Professor, it's about the Sorcerer's Stone. Whatever Professor McGonagall had expected, it wasn't that. The, boy, the books she was carrying tumbled out of her arms, but she didn't pick them up. How do you know, she spluttered. Professor, I think I know that, sn that someone's going to try and steal the stone. I've got to talk to Professor Dumbledore. She eyed him with a mixture of shock and suspicion. Professor Dumbledore will be back tomorrow, she said finally. I don't know how you found out about the stone, but rest assured, no one can possibly steal it. It's too well protected. But Professor... Potter, I know what I'm talking about, she said shortly. She bent down and gathered up the fallen books. I suggest you all go back outside and enjoy the sunshine. But they didn't. It's tonight, said Harry, once he was sure Professor McGonagall was out of earshot. Snape's going through the trap door tonight. He's found out everything he needs, and now he's got Dumbledore out of the way. He sent that note. I bet the Ministry of Magic will get a real shock when Dumbledore turns up. But what can we? Hermione gasped. Harry and Ron wheeled around. Snape was standing there. Good afternoon, he said smoothly. They stared at him. You shouldn't be inside on a day like this, he said with an odd, twisted smile. We were, Harry began without any idea what he was going to say. You want to be more careful, said Snape, hanging around like this. People will think you're up to something, and Gryffindor really can't afford to lose any more points, can it? Harry flushed. 
They turned to go outside, but Snake called them back. Be warned, Potter. Any more nighttime wanderings, and I will personally make sure you are expelled. Good day to you. He strode off in the direction of the staff room. Out on the stone steps, Harry turned to the others. Right, here's what we've got to do, he whispered urgently. One of us has got to keep an eye on Snape. Wait outside the staff room and follow him if he leaves it. Hermione, you'd better do that. Why me? It's obvious, said Ron. You can pretend to be waiting for Professor Flitwick. You know, he put on a high voice. Oh, Professor Flitwick, I'm so worried. I think I got question 14 B wrong. Oh, shut up, said Hermione. But she agreed to go and watch out for Snape. And we'd better stay outside the third floor corridor, Harry told Ron. Come on. 